realistic in that context is rarely the goal, just like a film, right? Like really what you're aiming for is bigger than life because it, the constraints are, you know, it's not actual reality, it's virtual reality. And just like with film, the constraints are such that you need to make it bigger than real to make it s jump out of the medium to make it feel compelling and realistic, you know, um, to the, the person experiencing it, right? Like if you've ever watched a home video, you can tell pretty quickly, like, real doesn't cut it. Um, and so, you know, these are things that we all already know, right? Um, there are a bunch of new constraints, um, and some of them are not the ones you would guess. The first thing that I noticed is when I put the goggles on, anything that I see that should, should, would normally make a sound really needs to make a sound, right? Like it's probably the number one thing I noticed. Is some, if you see something, you know, and it doesn't actually make a sound, any sound, you're, it's, it's super, like, takes you out of the space. Um, so the other thing, 3D sound, right, <laughs> is the thing that everybody is yelling about. Like, ah, you know, there's a dozen new companies, um, many of them making great products, and everybody's asking and talking about 3D. In fact, I just saw a blog post um, yesterday, which was a really interesting thing about you know, three virtualized headphones and 3D sound and, and the, kind of the comments and, f and posts that followed it by our audio community was r really interesting how much confusion I think there is around 3D sound. But again, the thing is, is we've actually been here before, right? Um, in fact, the A3D product that's up here, these guys were doing this, you know, what, 15 years ago? No more, 20 years ago. Um, and I was talking to uh, a developer today, and one of them had worked on this, right? So he was just like, oh yeah, this is all known. In fact, the technology that many of them are using, HRTF, right? And sort of that binaural, um, you know, uh, just so you, in case you don't know, 3D sound, sounds in a virtual 3D space, making their sound and then being mixed down to two for headphones, right? That's kind of the definition we're using just for now. Um, VR, you know, whether you want to put a constellation in your room and try and do it that way, I kind of doubt that's going to be the way people are going to go. Um, but for the moment, just putting on some headphones seems to be the way that, that people are approaching it. It's how we're certainly approaching it. Um, and, uh, and so, so yeah, you look at, you know, the, the concept of HRTF and binaural mixing of these placed sound in space, you know, it goes back to the 60s and NASA research, right? They looked into it pretty early on. Um, and it was applied in games, you know, 20 years ago. Um, so it's, it's nothing new. And when you look at sort of like the best, I thought, not, maybe not the best, but one of the best presentations at GDC this year was the Sony one on their VR sound. And the thing I loved about it is basically they just described a really great audio engine right? Like some really nice tools for um, kind of cheating propagation of sound. Because when you talk to the, the PhDs, like really propagating sound, it's a really tough problem. Like you can do it, but it takes big computers and it's not anywhere near real time. Um, maybe it will be sometime soon. Everybody's working on it now, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, so when we started looking at it, we realized like, look, as game audio designers, we already know what this is. Like, if you're a film guy, right, um, you're thinking about 3D sound as five, or, you know, sorry, 10, 11 speakers, right? Um, and it's not an object in space. But as, as 3D game design audio guys, we're already working in 3D space. And sure, it's a pan for the most part because somehow along the way from 20 years ago to today, we let HRTF go, right? We, and not everybody did. I'm sure some, some engines out there are using that still. I mean, it's in our code, I've seen it. Um, and we used it in Half-Life 2 for sure. Um, but you know, the early reflections, all the things that make a sound, and just so in case you don't know, like you know, if, a, if a sound's rotating around you, like going behind you, like, in most games today, what it'll do is go from here to there and then back to here, right? Um, 
and what HRTF and, and actual 3D sound does is applies um, basically um, DSP transforms that make it like it simulate the occlusion of your head, your torso, and your ear, and, and part of the canal so that as it goes behind you, it actually sounds like it's behind you, right? In theory. Um, and so somehow in the you know, last couple decades, we, I, I know why we stopped doing it. It's because it took a sound card, right, to, to actually implement it. And uh, most companies were going to all software, proprietary engine, or middleware. Um, but as we're looking forward now, all of a sudden, when we're trying to parse this idea um, and what, how to make immersive s sound, like all the standard tools that we already have still apply. Like, you know, in fact, game audio people are probably the best poised to make this transition into the future, um, into the future, into this new art form and this big change that we're going through. Um, you know, because we've been there. Uh, film guys, like, if you're talking about Atmos and some of those systems, like, it's all new to them, right? And some of them are doing amazing work, don't get me wrong, and I think a lot of, again, looking back, like, some of the choices they make will be perfectly apropos, right? Like, non-realistic forms and whatnot. However, that idea that, you know, this screen right is coming out of the speaker or whatever, is not going to work, right? Um, and I see that in all the demos we do. When, when you do a, 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 a immersive 3D sound demo and they're using a film, it's super confusing as a game audio person because I'm like, no, that sounds right there. <laughs> like, I know exactly where it is and where it should be and the visual doesn't match. Whereas in VR, that won't be the case because you can look anywhere, right? I was heavily involved with music, loved video games, loved film forever. I had truly no idea how this stuff worked until I came here. Games are the next level beyond filmmaking. So if you can grasp the concepts of sound design, working with linear images, and composing to linear picture, you can then begin to evolve into the next level of integrating sound and music into a non-linear environment. Every student basically picks a section of gameplay that they're gonna completely redesign the sound for. In addition to designing the sound as a movie, we're also gonna treat that as a virtual persistent environment that they need to create a full suite of sounds for that could be put into a game engine and actually turn that into a real live video game. Paramind was actually super essential because it gave me a systematic view of audio production. Paramind also really, really helped me with project management, music theory, middleware, music business has come up. Just about everything I took helped me at Double Fine. You're learning at Paramind from the real guys that are doing the work in the industry. That's priceless. You're walking out with a portfolio piece that says, I have these skills, I understand how this business works, and I understand what employers and companies are looking for in this creative space. Thank you.